Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. Today I am sharing some healthy meal prep recipes. I'm going to prep some fruit salad, uh, some Thai salad with veggie burgers. That's a really great lunch prep. I'm also going to make some goat cheese and arugula pasta salad and I'll link that recipe too, as well as some ham salad, which isn't necessarily low calorie, but it is low carb. And then some homemade banana bread. I like using this as an alternative to packaged bread and muffins for my kids breakfast in the morning. So the first thing that I'm going to get started on is the banana bread because that will have to uh, bake in the oven and takes the longest. So I am starting out with some butter and sugar in a bowl and I'm going to cream that together with some egg. These stainless steel bowls, I get questions about them a lot and my mom actually got them for me. They are available on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They come in a set and I really, really like them. Um, so I'm just using my hand mixer for this. Sometimes I use this instead of dragging out my big mixer if I'm just making like a muffin or a quick bread it's just a lot easier to manage and I can just you know stick the beaters in the dishwasher and wash them up so after I beat the egg in I'm gonna go ahead and add some vanilla this recipe is actually a Martha Stewart recipe and I've been using it for probably about eight to ten years now and it's the best banana bread recipe that I've found out there it uses sour cream in the batter which I think really does um, make the banana bread really moist so for the bananas I'm just going to peel those and put them on a plate and then just use a fork to mash them you could also use a potato masher if you wanted to but if the bananas are ripe the fork works just fine So I guess you could probably argue that banana bread is not necessarily healthy, but in this case, I'm actually using it as a substitute for packaged muffins. Um, I see a lot of people buying like the packaged um, chocolate chip muffins for their kids for breakfast. And like my kids would eat those <laughs> every morning for breakfast too. But I always feel like making something homemade is just a lot better. Even if it does have, you know, real butter and sour cream in it, at least you know that it doesn't have nearly all the preservatives that a packaged baked good had. So I don't know. I just feel better about giving my kids a slice of this in the morning along with some fruit or yogurt for their breakfast. So I went ahead and put my dry ingredients in the bowl and mixed those in along with the mashed up banana and the sour cream. And the recipe doesn't call for this, but I do like to add a little pinch of cinnamon. You can see how light and fluffy the batter is. I'm going to take my loaf pan and spray it with some canola oil spray. And what I like to do is just use a parchment paper sheet to kind of put a sling in the bottom of the pan. And then I spray that again with cooking spray before I pour my batter in. This makes it really easy when the banana bread cools to lift it out of the pan. You don't have to dig it out with a butter knife. It just works so, so much better. I'm gonna smooth the top with a spatula and then I will put that in the oven. This will bake for about an hour, probably after 50 minutes. You wanna go ahead and check it just to make sure that it's not overcooking, but it does take a while since the loaf is so thick. But here's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven. I just keep this on a container on the counter and then we can have it throughout the week. So it's really good. I'll link that recipe down below so you guys can try it out. So if you guys have watched my videos before, you know that another thing that I always like to make sure I do on the weekends after I do my grocery shopping is to prep my produce. So I try to prep as many fruits and vegetables beforehand as I can. And for grapes, I like to pull those off of the vines and put them in my OXO salad spinner. Uh, you guys that watch my videos all the time probably get tired of me saying that, but I know there's always new people joining. So I do use this salad spinner for much more than salad. It's great for soaking produce to wash it. So what I do is just put the grapes in there, put them in my sink, and I pour in a little bit of white vinegar along with really cold water. And I just let those soak in the sink there for probably about 10 to 15 minutes. I always find that grapes are a little bit dirtier, so I let them soak a little bit longer. I rinse them off and then I'm going to give a little bowl to Connor because he was sitting there watching me and wanted some. Um, for these, I'm just going to store them in a Ziploc bag. I do try to use as many reusable containers as I can, but sometimes I don't have the fridge space to be able to use a bunch of containers, so I just store these in a Ziploc bag with a paper towel. 
The next thing that I'm going to get started on is some fruit salad prep. So for this, I ended up getting some strawberries and some blackberries at the grocery store. I use the same method to wash these, just soak them in really cold water with some vinegar and then rinse them off really well just to make sure that there is no um, vinegar taste remaining. And then I just like to cut the tops off and then I slice them into a big container. I like these Rubbermaid um, I always forget what they're called if they're called like clear view containers or something like that they are available online so i'll link them down below but i like them because they're wide and shallow and i like to store cut up produce in them for us to eat throughout the week i do find that if we have produce prepped like this we're much easier to earn much more likely <clears throat> I should say to eat it so um, it's much easier for me to grab this out of the fridge in the morning to include with my kids breakfast or to put in their lunches or we like to eat it on yogurt or as a side with dinner as well. All right, so I want you guys to give me your honest opinion in the comments below because I've gotten some comments that I should save my strawberry tops and use them to flavor my water or put in smoothies. And I don't know why, but that just weirds me out a little bit. So I'm asking for your opinion. Do you save your strawberry tops? And if so, what do you use them for? <laughs> I'm just curious. Uh, anyway, I also did my blueberries, or I'm sorry, my blackberries the same way. And I'm gonna put those in the container and then Connor is gonna steal some, look at his little hand there. <laughs> the next thing that I'm going to do is just peel some halo oranges. I know that this is something that I could do at a later time or even the kids can peel these themselves, but if there are some in the fridge that I wanna use up, it's nice to just take a couple minutes and peel them and put them in a container so that way they are ready to go and we are more likely to eat them. All right, so here's the completed fruit salad. It seemed that Connor was eating the fruit almost faster than I could prepare it, but I do let my kids pretty much eat as much fruit as they want. So there you go. There he is grabbing another bite while he's pulling his Roblox. So uh, the next thing that I was gonna prep was some asparagus, and this was gonna be for uh, dinner later in the week, but I do like to wash it ahead of time because it makes it so much easier to just throw it in the oven with some olive oil, salt and pepper, and roast it for dinner. So I'm doing this the same way, just soaking it in vinegar. The thing with asparagus is you wanna make sure that you get it dried off really well before you put it back in the refrigerator, otherwise it will get slimy. So I just dried it off with a paper towel, and I'm going to put Put it in as a black bag and put it back in the refrigerator if you wanted to you could season this ahead of time with like i said olive oil and any seasonings that you wanted but i just went ahead and left it plain so this particular week that i was meal prepping i uh, was right before st patrick's day and so i had bought a head of cabbage to partially use for um, corned beef and cabbage and then i had a lot extra and so i ended up chopping that up for coleslaw which you'll see here in a second but um, I'm going to go ahead and soak the wedges while I'm chopping up the coleslaw part or the, you know, the cabbage for the coleslaw, and then I'll soak that separately. But um, essentially, I'm just cutting it into wedges and then chopping it as small as I can. Uh, personally, when I'm making coleslaw, I always buy the pre-shredded kind. Or, you know, what I have done before is I have shredded it in my food processor, which if I were going to do this again, I would probably do just because, you know, I don't mind chopping. I really actually like it, but it just seems like cabbage. You can get it so much thinner if you use a food processor. So um, I do uh, still get questions sometimes about my kitchen knife and it is quite an investment. I think this chef's knife is a um, Zwilling J.A. Henkels is the brand. It's a professional grade chef's knife. It is about $150, but it is an investment that will pay off and you'll have for years and years in your kitchen uh, if you invest in it. So yeah, here's my coleslaw. I'm going to wash that next. Uh, I went ahead and drained the wedges of coleslaw and put those in the fridge separately because those will be going into the crock pot along with some corned beef and potatoes and onions for St. Patrick's Day. So I soaked the um, cabbage for the coleslaw and then I'm just going to spin it dry 
uh, chopped cabbage actually keeps for about seven to 10 days in the refrigerator as long as it's dry. Um, if it's wet, obviously it will get slimy, but if you dry it off as much as possible, it will keep for a pretty long time. So I'm just going to put that into a Ziploc bag. I actually ended up using this the next week when we had company. I made some um, coleslaw out of it with like apples and parsley and uh, it was really really good i use actually the copycat kfc coleslaw recipe which i can post a link down below but that is my absolute favorite uh, coleslaw recipe and everyone loves it okay so next i'm going to continue on with my produce by washing some tomatoes i like to get these multicolored tomatoes from either aldi or walmart and i'm storing them in one of these rubbermaid freshworks produce containers which i really like for um, berries and tomatoes and stuff like that. I think it just keeps it a lot fresher in the refrigerator. And next I'm going to get started on chopping up some green leaf lettuce. So I had gotten this from the grocery store uh, because it looked a lot fresher than the romaine that they had. I usually alternate back and forth between getting green leaf lettuce and romaine. It just depends on kind of what looks the freshest. And for this, what I was going to do with it was prep some Thai salads, which you'll see in a little bit. But I also like to have this in the refrigerator so that we can have a quick uh, salad as a side with dinner or I can you know pack one for Adam to take to lunch or just whatever we need it for I actually prefer to chop and wash my own lettuce rather than buying the bagged lettuce I just find that it's a lot fresher and it stays in the fridge without getting brown so fast that's just my personal preference but how I like to do it is I chop it up and I put it in my salad spinner and then I squeeze about one the juice of one lemon over the greens so when you soak this with the lemon water um, what it does is it makes the lettuce not go brown so fast and it just kind of gives the lettuce a fresher flavor um, I guess you could use vinegar but personally I wouldn't I always just use the lemon juice because I figure that it tastes good with salad anyway so after I soaked that and drained it I spun it dry and then again I'm using one of these Freshworks um, produce containers to put my lettuce in to store in the refrigerator. All right, so here's another hot topic on my channel is, do you wash your chicken or your meat or your seafood or whatever before you use it. So personally, I have never really done this. I have an older video that's like a keto meal prep video that is like one of my most popular videos on YouTube. And I'm not kidding you, every day I get at least three, <laughs> three comments on that video saying how nasty I am because I didn't wash my chicken. So I was talking to my mom about this and she said that back in the 70s and 80s, it was recommended that people rinse their meat, but I did some research um, and the FDA recommends now that you don't rinse your meat. But again, it's just a personal preference thing. I wouldn't say that I never rinse my meat. Um, I do rinse my seafood and if I pull chicken out of the package and it seems like it's slimy or it needs to be rinsed, I do rinse it. Um, I never rinse my beef or anything like that. So I wanna know in the comments below if you guys rinse or wash your meat before cooking it because I just think it's fascinating. And I also think it's kind of funny how fired up <laughs> people get about it. But uh, so part of this I was gonna put in the freezer for a later use and then tonight or this night actually that I was filming this, I was gonna make chicken parm for dinner. So what you see me doing now is just flattening out those um, chicken breasts with a meat mallet. That way I can get them nice and thin to bread them up and fry for dinner. For the remainder of the chicken, I'm just going to put that into a Ziploc bag and I will freeze that for a later use. Another thing you saw me doing there was using my chicken scrap bag. I put the trimmings of that into a scrap bag and then I save that for when I make chicken stock in my Instant Pot. All right, so I had some leftover hummus from the previous week that I had made homemade and I didn't want it to go to waste. So I'm just prepping one little bento box. Um, I get these glass uh, kind of bento boxes on Amazon. I can link them down below, but I just like to put the hummus in the 
consistent and then I am sprinkling it with a little bit of the Fresh Jack's Greek seasoning which I really like and some olive oil. Um, if you're interested in frying out frying out trying out fresh jacks spices um, i do have a 15 percent off coupon code they have tons of neat stuff i'm actually going to be doing um, a cooking video with their spices soon and doing a giveaway so stay tuned for that so in the other section i put some sliced up cucumber and some carrots and then some naan bread and there is a great lunch for me to take to work this week the next thing that I'm going to work on is some Thai salad with veggie burgers. You could also make this with chicken or shrimp if you want to, but I have these Thai chili veggie burgers from Trader Joe's in my fridge that I want to get used up. So I'm using my air fryer to cook these. Um, I really do like my air fryer and honestly I was quite a skeptic because I do have a convection oven and so I thought why do I need an air fryer if I have a convection oven? But honestly we use this thing quite a lot to just do quick things like hash brown patties or like these veggie burgers or we'll make chicken nuggets for the kids in them, just different things like that. So I really do like it and I like the one um, that we have. It works really well. So while those are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and chop up my veggies for the salad. So I'm just slicing up some cucumber along with some yellow pepper. You can use any color pepper that you want. I'm also going to peel and section a um, clementine orange. I like to um, put the orange in my salad along with the wonton strips and the sesame dressing. It's really good. And here what you see me doing is just putting some of that green leaf lettuce that I washed up in the section of one of these um, takeout containers. This was actually like a Chinese takeout container that I had saved and I washed them and reused them for lunches. I'm also going to put some fresh cilantro on the top of there. Don't skip that step because I really think the cilantro is really important in this salad. Um, and then to the other section, I added some cucumber, some of that orange, and some pepper. Um, when I'm making salads like this, you can actually see that I'm sort of sectioning out the ingredients in the container. I don't just dump it all together in sort of one pile, otherwise everything kind of makes the lettuce soggy. I sprinkled in some almonds, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is pour out the dressing. So I get these dressing cups on Amazon. I'll link them down below, but they're super handy. And I'm using the Trader Joe's spicy peanut vinaigrette, which is really delicious, both as a dressing and as a chicken marinade. Um, I haven't tried it on salmon yet, but I really want to because I think that would be good too. I get these wonton strips at Walmart just in the crouton section, and they're really good. I'm just portioning out a little bit into a little Ziploc bag and then I'll include that in the salad. You don't want to put your croutons or you know wonton strips directly on top of the lettuce because they will get super soggy and they just won't be good at all. So I'm putting two of the veggie burger patties in each of the salads and it's okay if they break apart because you can actually break them apart and put them in the salad but here is what they look like when they are done. These are one of my favorite things to make and this is something I could eat for lunch like every week or every other week and I just wouldn't get tired of it. It's just really fresh and delicious and it's something to look forward to on your work days. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to make is some ham salad. Now I will say that if you are watching your fat or your salt intake, this is not the recipe for you because it does use ham and mayo. But if you're doing keto, it is the recipe for you because it is inherently really low carb. Okay, see my kid rolling around on the floor over there with the dog? <laughs> I was like cracking me up when I was editing this because he's playing catch with him with the tennis ball. But anyway, uh, so a little thing about ham salad. It always reminds me of my grandma. My grandma had this meat grinder that she would clamp on the side of her kitchen table and she would hand grind ham to make ham salad when I was little. And I remember it just being so cool. I don't have a ham grinder, so I use my food processor. But you can see there how I cut the ham up into chunks and... Um, just basically pulse it until it gets, you know, into fine crumbles. Now I have made this in one meal prep video before and I got some pretty mixed comments. I think people from the Midwest tend to know what ham salad is and really sort of embrace it and like it. Um, other people and people from other countries were like, Ooh, I don't know about this. Are you sure this is good? Is this really good? And I'm like, yeah, it is really good. <laughs> if you like tuna salad, 
uh, and you like ham, you would definitely like this. So in the bowl, I put some mayo. I'm also chopping up some pickles. These were just some pickles that I had um, actually made homemade. They were quick refrigerator pickles and I wanted to get them used up. So I'm just kind of chopping them as small as I can and I'll get those into the bowl. Um, if you like sweet pickles and you're not doing low carb and you don't care about the sugar content, you could definitely use sweet pickles instead. It's all just your taste and what you like. I do also like to put green onions in mine. Um, alternatively, you could do like a finely diced white or red onion. It's just all up to you what you want. Um, I also had some parsley in the refrigerator, so I'm going to chop that up and put some of that in there. I think this really gives it a great flavor too. So I'll just finally mince that up and put it in. But, you know, this is like any salad recipe. Basically, you just kind of add what you have in your fridge and what you like until you get to the taste that you want it. I'm going to add some pepper. Um, don't add salt to this because the ham is super salty. I'm going to add two packets of Splenda and just a little drizzle of half and half, which you might think is weird. You could use milk and not half and half. It just depends on what you like to do. But anytime I make like a salad mixture, like a potato salad or a ham salad, my grandma always taught me to put a little drizzle of half and half in there and it loosens up the dressing just a little bit and makes it a little creamier. I'm not sure why, but I always do it. So uh, I went ahead and stirred that up and then just give it a taste and see how you like it. If you think it needs, you know, salt, add salt. If you think it needs sugar or Splenda, add that. Just basically keep tasting it and adding until it is seasoned to your liking. So you can see me there actually adding a little bit of dill relish that I got out of the refrigerator because I thought it needed like a little bit more pickly taste. So yeah. Uh, just just keep going until you get the right flavor. I mean, this is the same for any salad that you make, tuna salad, egg salad, whatever. So once I got it to the seasoning that I wanted, I'm just going to put this in a glass dish. I did end up with quite a bit of this, so we shared it with some friends, but this is really good on bread as a traditional sandwich, or you can also eat it on crackers or cucumber slices if you're doing low carb. Delicious, I would seriously encourage you to try it. Okay, next thing that we're gonna work on is some goat cheese and arugula pasta salad. There I am burning my hand on the handle of the pan, but uh, the first thing that I'm gonna do is boil some water and add some rotini. I'm using some leftover veggie rotini that I had in my pantry, but you can use regular pasta or whole wheat pasta, whichever you prefer. This original recipe came from the Cookie and Kate blog. Um, I also have her cookbook, which I really like, and so I will link uh, both the um, blog post that has the recipe and the cookbook in the description box below. I would recommend checking either out. Her cookbook is really good. Like I said, I've made several recipes out of it. So what you want to do is put the hot pasta in a bowl and then you'll add some goat cheese, some salt and pepper, and a drizzle of olive oil. Um, another thing that you want to make sure that you do is save some of the pasta cooking water because you're going to use that to loosen up your pasta salad. So I also added some red pepper flake. You could leave those out if you don't want them spicy or if you don't want it spicy, but I didn't really find that it made it that spicy. I also squeezed in uh, half a lemon and I'm just stirring that around until the goat cheese gets distributed and then adding some of the pasta cooking water. So really the consistency of this salad is up to you. Once you put it in the refrigerator and it sits for a while, it will kind of firm back up, um, but it doesn't get super firm if you know what I mean. Um, the, the, the recipe is good, um, you know, kept in the fridge for a few days. I wouldn't recommend mixing the arugula with the pasta salad mixture. I would recommend kind of keeping it separate just because the arugula will have a tendency to wilt if it's in that wet dressing. But the tomatoes are fine to go ahead and put in the pasta salad mixture. So I'm just having those and putting them in with the pasta and I'm going to get some Kalamata olives and have those and put them into the bowl as well. So once you're done with the pasta salad mixture, you can put these into some dishes to take for your meal prep 
or eat later in the week. Like I said, I did put the pasta salad in the bottom and then just kind of put the arugula on top of that. This worked out fine. As long as you're going to prepare it ahead of time, I would just say make sure you don't mix the arugula with the pasta. Otherwise, it's obviously going to get really soggy and wilted and it's not going to taste very good. So um, here's also another sneak peek because you can see that I need a photo, obviously, for <laughs> my thumbnail and for this video. So I'm just going to snap a picture of that uh, really quick here. See me arranging the tomatoes so artfully on top of that bowl? I'm totally kidding. I am not a professional when it comes to this. Um, I just try to do what looks the best and uh, make thumbnails that look appetizing. But anyway, uh, once that's done, you can put the lids on and stick that in the fridge and it's ready to go. Okay, so we are at the end of our meal prep. I'm just going to review everything that I got done today. So I washed up my grapes. Those are all clean and in a baggie for our use this week. I have my asparagus that I'm going to roast later in the week as a side for dinner. I have my uh, green leaf lettuce all washed up along with my cabbage. So I have the uh, wedges of cabbage for the corned beef and cabbage along with the shredded cabbage that I will use later for coleslaw. I have my little hummus bento box with the naan bread and the carrots and cucumbers. Also my fruit salad that Connor ate half of while I was prepping and my ham salad. Uh, that is really good and I would encourage you to try it if you never have and you like ham. My two um, Thai salads with veggie burgers, these were really great and I took them for lunch that week. And then I have two bowls of the arugula and goat cheese pasta salad as well as some biscuits and gravy that I didn't meal prep in this video but I made that weekend and wanted to show you guys that Adam will take that during the week. And here's my banana bread because I forgot to show you that as well. So thanks again for watching this video. I always love making these and I get tons of great feedback that you guys like them too. So if you have any suggest suggestions for future meal prep videos, let me know. I'm planning on doing another keto one as well as a Mediterranean diet one and maybe a no cook meal prep. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye.